The official history of manned spaceflights is that the Soyuz 18 spaceship launched on May 24, 1975 from the Baikonur Cosmodrome with a crew of Pyotr Klimek and Vitaly Sevastyanov. The ship successfully docked with Sally at Force Station, where the crew worked for two months. On July 26 of the same year, the astronauts returned to Earth. There is not a word of a lie in these words, but the truth is not all. The fact is that the ship of Klimek and Sebastianov for the initiates had a slightly different name, Soyuz 18B. About what happened to Soyuz 18A, or, otherwise, Soyuz 18-1, specialists of the space industry were not recommended to disseminate. Meanwhile, the flight of this spacecraft is one of the most dramatic pages of national astronautics, and its crew had to endure what no one else had to endure. The commander of the Soyuz 18-1 spacecraft was Vasily Lazarev, and the flight engineer was Oleg Makarov. Flying Doctor Lazarev, a native of Altai territory, after serving in the army entered a medical institute, became a surgeon and worked as a military medic. Lazarev served in the Airfield Support Battalion of the 30th Air Army. But since childhood he dreamt of flying, and in 1952 the 24-year-old doctor made a sharp turn Lazarev entered the Kharkov Higher Military Aviation School in Chugov and graduated from it on an accelerated program, specializing as a fighter pilot. This photo shows the Soviet pilot cosmonaut, hero of the Soviet Union Vasily Grigorievich Lazarev. Naturally, such a versatile specialist turned out to be in great demand Lazarev tested various types and modifications of airplanes, was involved in tests of various high-altitude equipment for pilots, spacesuits, overload suits, oxygen equipment. Lazarev participated in experimental flights of Volga Stratostat, the same one from which parachutist Yevgeny Andreev made his unique jump from space as part of Zvezda experiment. Vasily Lazarev flew the Volga for 28 hours. When it came to testing new technology, as the human spaceflight was neatly called, Lazarev was among the first volunteers. He underwent a medical examination along with Gagarin, Tidov and other members of the first squad, but received a refusal from the medics. However Lazarev had a lot of persistence, in 1964 he was selected to prepare for a flight on board the Voskhod 3-man spacecraft. Lazarev was the second understudy for Dr. Boris Yegorov. Although he did not take part in the flight itself, this time he was noticed, and eventually Vasily Lazarev became a member of the Soviet cosmonaut team. The engineer who broke through to space. Lazarev trained under several programs, including the manned Soviet lunar project. It was then that his crewmate was Oleg Makarov. Oleg Makarov, the USSR cosmonaut, twice hero of the Soviet Union. Oleg Makarov, a native of Tver region, before joining the ranks of cosmonauts, was building equipment for them. In 1957, he graduated from the Bauman Moscow State Technical University and came to work at OKB No. 1, the famous design bureau of Sergei Korolev. Makarov was involved in the development of the first Soviet manned spacecraft. Like many other young engineers of Korolev's design bureau, he wanted to go into space himself. In 1966 Makarov was enrolled in the Cosmonaut Corps and trained for several years on the lunar program. The engineer was among those who were to be among the first to go on a lunar expedition. However, defeat in the lunar race forced the Soviet Union to reconsider its priorities. Lazarev and Makarov, who made up an excellent crew, were transferred to the Salyut 2 station to prepare for the flight. The Test Crew these preparations were carried out under difficult conditions. The Soviet man program was interrupted after the death of the crew of Soyuz 11 because of depressurization during return to Earth. The Salyut 2 station, where Lazarev and Makarov were to fly, malfunctioned, and the flight program was revised again. A series of failures undermined the confidence of Soviet specialists. The new Soyuz 12 was tested many times, and new spacesuits were developed for the crew, designed to prevent a repeat of the Soyuz 11 tragedy. Nevertheless, no matter how hard we try, no matter how hard we try to rule out surprises, it is impossible to account for everything on Earth. The crew of Soyuz 12 was, in a sense, to do again what Gagarin did, to open the way for others into space. Vasily Lazarev and Oleg Makarov were charged with this mission. Cosmonauts Vasily Lazarev, 
left, and Oleg Makarov, right, after training on a training ship. On September 27, 1973 Soyuz 12 with Lazarev and Makarov was successfully launched from Baikonur Cosmodrome. The flight lasted one day, 23 hours 15 minutes and 32 seconds and ended successfully. Designers breathed out, the manned program was saved. Lazarev and Makarov became heroes of the Soviet Union and then began preparing for another spaceflight, this time to the Sally at 4 orbital station. Emergency in January 1975 Lazarev and Makarov were understudies of the Soyuz 17 crew Alexei Gubarev and Georgi Grechko. According to established tradition, the understudies went into space next. The start of Soyuz 18 was scheduled for April 5, 1975. In contrast to the flight on Soyuz 12, this launch did not seem extraordinary to specialists, in fact the same Gubarev and Grechko reached the station safely, fully worked off the flight program and returned successfully. The Soyuz 18-man spacecraft before the launch at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. On April 5, everything also started well. Traditional pre-flight procedures, putting the crew into the ship, launch. Rocket, as it should be, at 11.04 am, Soyuz 18 takes to the sky. Everything went smoothly, the first stage separated on schedule, then the payload fairing was jettisoned in the plan mode. At 261 seconds of flight the separation of the second stage should have taken place, but instead the rocket began to rock appreciably and the amplitude increased. Very quickly, it became clear that the launcher failed before the cosmonauts reached the planned orbit. The emergency system went off, firing the re-entry vehicle. 26G It happened at an altitude of just under 200 kilometers, that is, de facto already in space. At the same time, the emergency descent took place in uncontrolled mode. To put it simply, the descent vehicle of Soyuz 18 was falling out of space. This happened on April 5, 1975. After launch, the first two stages of the rocket worked properly, but the engines of the third stage, which was supposed to provide the third space speed about 8 km per second, did not start. Then, for the first time in the history of astronautics, the system of emergency rescue of the crew worked. The payload fairing was dropped, the spacecraft compartments were separated and the descent vehicle began its emergency descent to Earth from a height of about 170 kilometers, Oksanov wrote. According to him, a rocket crash at such an altitude leads to the most difficult descent with a life-threatening overload of about 19 g. This means that the body weight of the astronaut increases 19 times. Such values of overload are caused by the fact that the spacecraft, having gained only half of its target speed, begins a sudden descent down a very steep ballistic trajectory, literally burrowing into the atmosphere. To reduce this critical overload, the designers provided a special mode called KMAX, in which the orientation engines of the descent vehicle had to keep it in the most favorable ballistic position and reduce the overload by about 2G, i.e. from 19 times to 17 times. But, as it happens in real conditions, the automation worked in exactly the opposite mode, instead of reducing the overload it increased by 2G, and the astronauts got a 21.3G overload during descent. This is the peak value, which probably helped the crew to survive in these incredible conditions, states Oksanov. For example, during the cosmonaut squad selection process, a maximum 20-second overload of 10G is allowed during rotation on the centrifuge. Lazarev and Makarov had a brief cardiac arrest and brief loss of vision. That was the first part of the story of how the Soviet cosmonauts survived the fall from space. How it happened, what happened to the cosmonauts is in part 2. I am already preparing this video. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.